The past decade has forever changed our understanding and experience of Homeland Security. We have learned that threats to our physical existence are as unpredictable as they are varied. From hurricanes to mega-terrorist attacks, cyber villains to industrial accidents, each and every response must all be analyzed and prepared for. To safeguard our cities and protect our citizens, a new approach is required. The collaborative approach of the Ben Gurion University of the Negev's Homeland Security Institute, HSI. Here, researchers like Dr. Oren Sadot are specializing in high-speed phenomena such as shock waves, blast waves, and their interaction with structures, including buses. One big step forward that we did in this lab is developing the blast simulator, which can give us the ability to conduct a real blast explosion in a small scale size of physical understandings that in time will help the engineer to design and develop protective means for infrastructure, houses and vehicles. With computers affecting almost every aspect of our daily lives, cyber attacks can be economically devastating and potentially dangerous. Professor Bracha Shapira is developing extremely sophisticated malware detection applications for mobile devices that can detect deviations from the normal application's behavior within minutes. We here at the Cybersecurity Center develop uh, new technologies and new algorithms to defend and to protect users from these cyber attacks. On a personal level, we develop algorithms for securing and identifying malware for mobile phones and protect users from identity theft. For organization, we develop algorithms to uh, detect uh, data leakage. And on a national level, we develop algorithms that can detect anomalies on infrastructures and on critical networks. Understanding political and cultural rhetoric is highly important for intelligence analysis. Professor Yair Neumann is leading an international team of researchers to develop a software system capable of identifying large amounts of data gathered from the internet and other open sources. In trying to understand the different mind, we have to understand the language this mind speaks. We must understand metaphors. So our first task is to teach the computer to differentiate between metaphorical language and simple literal language. It means that the computer has to automatically differentiate between a sweet baby, which is a metaphor, and a sweet candy, which is a literal use. The next phase is to try to understand the meaning of metaphors. So the connotations, the deep cultural meaning of shark and my lawyer is a shark may be different in Iran than in the States. Professor Dan Bloomberg and Professor Stanley Rotman work together to utilize the full potential of remote sensing when identifying risks. Remote sensing refers to the use of sensor technologies to detect and classify objects on Earth by understanding the way waves, mostly light waves, propagate from a sensor or from the sun to Earth and back to the sensor. We, first of all, map the environment so we can generate geologic maps to try and understand what the geology or lithology of the environment is. We do it for Earth, we do it for Mars, we do it for Venus, areas that we cannot access. But sometimes we cannot access areas for other reasons, mostly if they're neighboring countries or distant countries even. And then we can use satellites to look at these areas which are far away from our homeland and try and understand where threats are emanating from. We take data that comes from optical sensors, radar, hyperspectral sensors, and we analyze them in order to get the information that is necessary for target detection. 
We were able to detect poison gases. We can detect target launchers. We can detect missiles that are in the sky and we can track them. Homeland security also means being on guard all the time, even if it means turning night into day. My research is uh, focused on converting uh, infrared light into visible light within a very, very thin layer. It's so thin, it is much less than the thickness of a hair. Basically, to have anyone, any soldier, any law enforcement officer to have glasses that you can go at night and have like a full moon observation capability. Use those glasses which are very compact, very small, very lightweight and very affordable. Satellites provide Israel with a technological edge over its neighbors. The Homeland Security Institute is working with local industries and the Ministry of Science to help Israel maintain its strategic advantage in this critical field. One of the major elements within the uh, spectrum of space mission architecture is the satellite and its environment, the orbits. My research focuses on the analysis and design of methodologies to learn, model, estimate and control systems within orbits and satellite systems. Today, at Ben Gurion University of the Negev, I see the huge potential of its researches in the field of space technology. BGO projects such as nanosatellites will be a great contribution to Israel's technology and security. Another interdisciplinary collaboration is the Institute's Laboratory for Autonomous Robotics, or LAR. A wide variety of unmanned vehicles and instrumentation technologies have been developed for defense, industrial, and oceanography applications. The LAR is currently leading Robil, the only foreign team accepted to participate in the United States' Department of Defense, DARPA's Robotics Challenge. The basic idea is uh, to create platforms that are able to behave like a human being, take decisions and move in complex environments that are dangerous to human beings or are difficult in terms of manpower. Our systems are applied in the areas of homeland security, industry, even in medicine application and in healthcare. Studies have found that community resilience is one of the key aspects of emergency preparedness and response. This includes first providers, healthcare systems, and psychological support during and after an emergency. This field has been around for a while, but making it scientific is the basis of what we're doing. We're trying to quantify, we're trying to measure in a scientific method various aspects because we believe that improvement in preparedness to disasters will be based on data that's been collected and is objective and measurable. And as in other sciences, we can repeat the measurements and measure again and again and see if we're better prepared for the next time. Israel's National Water Authority manages and protects the country's vital water system. The Institute is continuously working on novel sensing devices that can provide real-time alarms whenever a hazardous compound is detected in the water supply. The National Water Authority and the National Water Company, Mekrovot, adopted based on our research different alternatives for water supply in case of catastrophe. We are very proud in Israel that the distributed water within our national water system, the mains, the laterals, are drinkable water. It is not trivial. It takes a lot of effort to protect the quality. Biological sensors as well as chemical sensors, some of them developed in our university, are now functioning in key points, stations, along the National Water Carrier. Here at Ben Gurion University, we have a very good relationship with the industry, in many fields, but particularly in Homeland Security. We understand the importance of protecting people from real immediate dangers. 
natural or man-made disasters, and our focus is on life-saving technologies. Diverse faculties and disciplines, each staffed by renowned experts working on cutting-edge scientific research and development projects. And when they come together, they form a unique interdisciplinary vanguard against man-made and natural threats. That's the Ben Gurion University of the Negev's Institute for Homeland Security, keeping us safe today and tomorrow. <laughs>